Uncle Mud here in Western Iowa with uh, Ken here at Bethany Farm. What is the name of this little town? Brayton, Iowa. Brayton, Iowa. With this beautiful straw bale house that he and Jim Shaw's have been working on for the last 400 years. I've been working on, I started six years ago. Jim's been helping me for the last two years. Oh, uh, this is just beautiful. And uh, it's getting on uh, late October, so it's starting to get a little chilly out here. And uh, that straw bale must be a lot nicer than out here in the whistling wind, huh? Well, today is the first day we've introduced any heat into the home. And everybody else has been running their furnaces for about three weeks now. Yeah, well, that's always nice to, to be able to not have to chop so much wood so soon. So we've got this lovely earthen plaster here. And that's from over there, right? Yes, the bluffs. You can see right over the lilacs. Right over the lilacs, there's this, these bluffs where there's this sandy clay soil. Or is it mostly clay and you had to add sand? Mostly clay and we added sand, yes. So he added sand and chopped straw. And this is uh, one part clay, one part sand, one part manure, and one part straw. Fantastic. And then you're going to put some more on it later, right? You're going to build it out? Uh, maybe more plaster, but probably a rain screen. Well, it'll be interesting to see how it, uh, how it handles the, um, the, the weather here. Yes. What erosion happens. A lot mm. of it depends on how wet the fall is, it seems like. You know, if oh. I have a lot of rain. Listen. Quiet. That's one of the things I love about these natural homes with the, the thick walls is the quiet. Uh, look at that rocket heater that Ken and Jim made. Burning nicely. It's going to store heat in this six inch thick cob wall and uh, slowly radiate it out at night to keep the house warm. This is what's called a batch box rocket heater. You can drop a lot of wood in there and then the gases ignite and come out the back up a chimney inside of this into the hollow block here and warm that block and the cooler gases fall out of this block into a lower block that you can actually sit on before the uh, gas comes up the chimney there. But this consists of a lot of sculpting and a lot of polishing. How many hours do you think you guys have into this? I can't even guess. <laughs> it was about, well, it was hours. I don't even know. We were many, we were, many. We weren't just working on the rocket. We were also working on the island and other aspects of the house with the walls and stuff. Yeah. Let's look at that island for a second. This is a work of art itself. This is this Cobb Island. Mm. And whose idea was this? This was my idea. Well, my wife wanted an island, but she wanted an Ikea island. And I chose, I said, I'll have an island, but I want to make it. And so I'd much rather work with clay than wood. Yeah. And this is, uh, what's sealing this uh, lovely uh, concrete countertop? I have... Uh, Several coats of an epoxy. Yeah. That's sealed. Well, that's just durable for that use. And the cob is linseed oil again. Linseed oil, and I plan on putting a wax on it just to maintain the surface. Oh, that's just beautiful. 
And then these are these cabinets were uh, used counter cabinets, and they fit in with the whole scheme of thing. You just repainted everything, right? Yes. Mm, I love your backsplash here, the sculpted backsplash. Pictures aren't going to do it justice because the, the depth of the carving on this is just amazing. I love it when you can go live in a piece of artwork. And you see this every morning when you get your coffee. And <laughs> it is glorious. And you look out. Which way south from here? You're looking south. Mm. Directly south. As you survey your domain... Uh, that window's got to be a cozy place to sit on a sunny February day. It is nice, except I was plastering outside, and you can see I got some <laughs> muddy water on the windows. Oh, no. I would think my window had been broken and smashed if it didn't have mud on it. <laughs> uh, I love your, your foot rests here. How you've sculpted things. And you said the kids from the uh, from camp helped you on this? They helped. Some teenage girls uh, helped sculpt the rough clay. I mean, it was a heavy clay straw mix that was sculpting that. And this floor is chopped straw and more more cob. Um, how thick are your, is your... The, the clay is uh, an inch and a half thick. Over concrete or over gravel? Or? It's over a gravel mix. Uh, Sukita Krimmel wrote a book on yeah. floors, and that's what I used to create the subfloor. Mm, call out to Sukita. That's a great book. A lot of people use that book and get good floors. This is just like walking on leather. It just feels fantastic to... I like the slight undulation too, just ever so slight. Yeah, that's that is this floor. Mmm. I like your new TV over there. <laughs> you don't need a TV with a fire. That's right. That's right. Ah. Uh, that's just so comfortable. Although the really awesome technical feet is in here. This is a sink made out of mud. I love it. You spend a good while burnishing this. You got one of your stones handy? Uh, yeah, not my favorite, but... Um... I love the sound quality in the house. It just seems to absorb the sound energy. But look at this cob vanity with a cob sink. That same sculpted sand and clay and manure and chopped straw. Here's uh, a couple look. of the stones. These stones. Definitely not my favorite ones. Just polish and polish and polish until it's all burnished. And then what was it? Linseed oil and uh, beeswax on this? Linseed oil. And then I I love the uh, carnauba wax. It's a... Uh, carnauba wax. Like a sink. A sink made out of mud. And it doesn't get muddy. I followed uh, um, Siggy Coco's, Siggy Coco's yeah, recipe. Sink, so. Did you follow her her sink she was making that she posted online? Yes, or, yes, on yeah. Facebook. That, that was that was how this is here. Is inspiring, wasn't it? Very that inspiring. Just, oh, everything she does is inspiring. Mmm, <laughs> that's beautiful. We got a little pantry there. I love the the lines with the lights up there. You got some little lights up yeah, there. Yeah, little uh, a string of lights that just yeah. look nice. Give it a little shadow. And then you got your 
pantry in here so it doesn't have to be so cluttered elsewhere. Oh, and the laundry room here with a nice door to the outside. This was the very first room we plastered, and you'll see a difference in the plaster on that side of the room versus this side of the room. <laughs> we added wheat paste on this side where this one didn't have wheat paste in it. Mmm, yeah. And that was a repair. Yeah. A water leak. Oh, no. From the roof? No, I, mi I built a chase, and during the process of building the chase, I put a screw into a pipe. Don't. And it leaked, and uh, so I had to tear out that whole section and put in rock wool and lath and plaster. Mm hmm. This is a clay lease Over, paint for the ceiling here. Over plywood, right? Over plywood, yeah. Your hot water here. Are you putting a shower in over here? Or? No, that will just be a, uh, a sink. I'll, I'll install a utility sink. Got it. And here's your hot water and lovely uh, closet there. This is a linen closet, and this has the only truth window in the house, which is uh -huh. showing the light straw clay wall. Oh, yeah. A little dark. A little dark in there. Yeah, I, can put my, my, I don't have a light there. but Yeah, but... There we go, that's the light clay straw truth window. Ah. Uh, and this that's is- not much to show. Oh no, this is the throw the process. Okay. <laughs> this this shows the, the true factual, the facts of life of living in a construction zone. So that you can get amazing stuff like this. See, I need a room like that, I can throw everything in. <laughs> Except that then I throw everything in there, and then, then I have to have another room like that to throw the rest of everything in. Yeah, it's in building a house. It's con it's always moving stuff from one place to another place to another place. Because <laughs> yes, I love the, your your clear story windows throughout the house to let air circulate and and light. You're having a little bit of borrowed light from each room mm -hmm. to another room. Yeah. I just, um, I love walking down the hallway where I see the daylight. Exactly. Yes, those. yes. There's little clear stories. Now, fortunately, you don't have the kids over so much because that would, I mean, the noise of people yes. while you're trying to sleep gets Eventually, a little... Eventually, I will put up, uh, you know, open up a little... little stained glass stained or something. Glass. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is a much bigger adventure than the other one, isn't it? Yeah, this was a big project. Ah, it's so fantastic, though. Jim Chalice came up with the basic design of the sink. As far as the three tiers, mm -hmm. it created a, a vanity area where my wife could put on her makeup here. And you got to leave the light like that. It's like <laughs> have this all perfect with this just a little hanging light. I don't think so. <laughs> Why are you sleeping in the garage again? Yeah, <laughs> Big bathtub or shower over here? Uh, yeah. yeah, we're thinking of either a clawfoot bathtub, possibly a shower. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure. So wow. this is my tub of plaster that I'll be using for the all right uh, the cabinet of the vanity. Oh, that's beautiful stuff. Oh, the kitty's got in it. Oh, probably. Yeah, but oh, oh, that's nice stuff. Mmm. Oh. Yeah, yeah. There's a sensuality to playing with this, isn't there? It's a lovely plaster. It really mm -hmm. is. I was going to put it in my pocket, yeah. and all the way across Colorado, I'd just be like putting my hand in my pocket. There's a of water there, I think. Mm. <laughs> oh, it almost feels bad to wash it off. That's so nice. There you go. No, I got it. Oh, I got, got it. it. Okay. Right on my jacket where it goes. Yes. Oh, what a fun, fun house. Thank you for sharing this with us. Mm. I am really glad that you came. This is just, this is so lovely. And you walk in the door and you're confronted with this. How does it compare to how you felt coming into the trailer? 
moving from a trailer after living in there for eight years to this sheer delight. I mean, we have closets, we have real walls, we have health. It's just been a, a complete change. Mm. It is quite lovely. Yeah, we have art. Art to look at every day. Yes, we live in art. Yes, that's the lovely thing about the glass was radiating heat from almost the moment you started it. Yeah, oh. that, is, that is nice. That's just beautiful. Oh. North Stone is where I bought all my hardware from. North Stone. And, um... They are really good to work with. And you remember what Jim's website is? We'll have to put it on, on the video because this is really great. Let me look it up to make sure. Mm. Well, thank you so much for your hospitality. We really enjoyed being here. Mm. I have to point this out again to bug my wife. This is a power and USB plug on a rocket heater, as God had intended. Part two gets a little geeky as we join Ken for the first big firing of his super efficient rocket mass heater, and we talk fire science. Part two is for patrons only. Join us at patreon.com forward slash Uncle Mud for as little as a dollar a month to help support these tours and get to see what we're up to. Thank you.